Hey boys and girls. Okay, so I am still in my home um, in the shelter in place order. So um, I do have a backyard. I'm very lucky. And I'm out here in my backyard um, today because today what we're going to learn about is we're going to learn about the earth artist uh, Andy Goldsworthy who makes his artwork entirely from um, materials that he finds here in nature. So if you have a backyard, um, this is gonna be great for you. If you can go on a nature walk, um, go out to a park and uh, gather up materials from that park or make some art in that park and take a picture, but then also leave that artwork for other people to find, that would be really amazing. So based on whatever is comfortable for your family, um, what uh, permission you get from your parents, um, I think that this can be a really amazing project. So we're gonna take the next about 10, 15 minutes to learn about the artwork of um, Andy Goldsworthy to inspire us so that we can go out into our own natural environments and make some artwork. Okay, so I'm gonna go and um, you're just gonna see um, the, the, the presentation I'm gonna put together. So let's take a look at some of his artwork now. All right, so every artist has a big idea that they follow that uh, creates sort of their unique style. And Andy's big idea is that he uses only found objects um, to create his designs using the basic elements of art. And then he always takes a picture and lets the art back, fall back into nature. All right, so before we move on, we need to talk about the elements and principles of art because we're going to be making some designs and so we need to be paying attention to these things. So we have uh, talked a lot about the elements of art in our classes. Of course we've done whole projects about line, shapes, we know our colors. We have explored some projects with value. So value is, is taking one color and then making it from light to dark, dark to light, texture, space, and form. Form is those 3D objects. So uh, that is all the elements of art. And I'm going to erase all that there. We have also talked about uh, a little bit about the uh, principles of design. Balance, so that's your symmetry and asymmetry. So you can have radial symmetry, which is, uh, you know, going in a round pattern patterns that go around. You can have bilateral symmetry, so that's balancing where it's the same on both sides. Um, and you can have other different kinds of symmetry. You can have asymmetry, which is a whole other thing. Uh, so having a balanced design. Contrast, emphasis, uh, pattern. We've talked a lot about pattern before. Unity, movement, and rhythm. All right, so understanding all of those elements and principles of art or using all of them um, or seeing them come up in designs, uh, be paying attention to those while we are looking at the rest of this artwork here. All right, now just recently, uh, Andy Goldsworthy created an installation at the Kansas City Nelson Atkins Museum of Art. Using local limestone, he showed line and movement, creating a walking wall. So for months, uh, Goldsworthy team constructed, deconstructed, and reconstructed a limestone wall in and around and through even the museum. And we can see here, even like in this picture here, how it's going through the museum there on those two pictures. Um, which is really incredible. So, um, and, and here we see where the two, uh, th there's some folks right there that are working on the wall, um, going in front of the museum, and it meandered through this way, through the museum, <laughs> um, or appear to, and even come out from the museum into the outside again. Uh, so it's really incredible to see. If you want to see um, a short video about 
the walking wall pbs news hour did um, a short segment on it and i'll leave the link to that in the comments below or in the description below excuse me all right uh just to cite where i'm getting all of these uh this is the website uh where you're going to be able to find uh the following images plus a lot more images so i'll also leave this link in the description if you want to look at more of his um artworks from this catalog so what we have here is we have um the elements of art that are really being used here is shape so we've got um, obviously we've got our uh, circle here right this has created a circle which has also created this negative space inside um, looks like a portal or something really cool like you can really have your imagination uh, go crazy with this um, and then of course he used lines these long sticks here um, are, are these straight sticks but woven together in this way has created uh, the circle shape in this negative space inside and those are the elements of art that are really being used in this particular work of art and these are woven branches um, and it was done in 1986 similar idea here um, again he's taken these straight sticks right here um, and woven them together and then suspended this in this uh, uh, this, this storm drain um, to create this really stark contrast and negative space right here. This one is really interesting I think because when we first look at it it looks like it's it's just suspended in the air. But actually what he's done here is he has um, placed it in water and the reflection of the water is what gives it uh, that loop design so he stuck these uh, sticks in and you can see it in places like right here uh, when you really look at it you can see where the water reflection begins and ends and then you can see it again back here where it kind of bends but you really have to look at it very carefully um, to figure out where the sky is and where the water is on this sculpture. And over here, you can read some of his artist notes that he did. So he would make some notes about these, and, and this particular website on some of these have his notes. Um, so with this, he talks about how he had to wait until the water cleared out so that there wasn't any of the foam or any ripples left so he had to wait a really long time for the water to get still enough to get these reflections so again here the reflection there and the actual stick sticking up there really pretty design on that one this one um, shape line space so you know the lines here of the uh, rocks but mostly what his biggest one here is going to be balance um, and the balance of this part down here and this part up here and then that amazing little space right there with that round rock that he he found there um, and, and in his notes he says he didn't think it would it would actually work um, it kept wobbling but he finally found a place where it would balance perfectly um, and then he he caught that picture of it this one's uh, just really it's all about these crazy lines these lines that go in and around these big stones here which actually are not big stones these are these very small uh, stones and uh, just a very long long piece of grass that he has woven around these rocks um, so this uh, the element of art here as I bolded it because this is really all about the line a little bit about the forms of the rocks but really all about the line that just um, draws your eye in and so because the the line goes in and around and over and through this space um, movement is a really big part of this design here. 
All right, uh, this is actually from a different website, so just cited that right there. So this is some of his later work um, where he really got into color. Um, so this one is he gathered up leaves from all over, but just sorted them in uh, different colors and values. So the, um, the the main elements here, of course, our color really pops out at you, but also using the values of those colors, using those autumn colors here, from going from a very, very bright yellow to a very, very dark red um, is a great example of color value there. And then, again, creating that negative space inside there and creating this organic shape around in here. This one, um, again, also using um, value, how we go from this dark green all the way to this white, this um, very light yellow, and then the dark green line that meanders all the way and changes into a yellow line up here. That draws that uh, that draws your eye back into the distance here, creating that movement because it moves your eye around. And then, um, so not only do we have value here, but we also have those colors that contrast. Another great example of color, value, um, by adding the leaves here in this little pond that are floating, it creates this great organic shape. Um, and space right here filling that space that would normally be just like either dark murky water or maybe a reflection but instead filling that space with those um, colors that also create that uh, rainbow effect of those values going from dark green to middle green to light green to that you know that yellow green there and then yellow that fades into an orange that fades into a dark orange that fades into a dark red um, so a lot of valid color value there again uh, you've got the radial symmetry so this the symmetry that goes around here and that radial symmetry is created by this bilateral symmetry that again, what he's done is he's stuck these uh, sticks into water, um, waited for the pond to become still. You can just barely make it out there where that line is um, that creates that symmetry, that bilateral symmetry, but then by making it into that arch, he's also created a radial symmetry there course using these straight lines that create a shape that is a circle shape and creates this great negative space all right and here are some student examples I pulled these examples from the art of education uh, edu website you can see that these students did a circle pattern or what we call radial symmetry where they have created a pattern that goes around that is fantastic. You can also make a pattern that goes around or some other element or principle of art displayed in your design. All right, now it's your turn to go out into nature, find some natural materials, and make your own amazing designs using the basic elements and principles of design. I hope you have fun. I hope you've learned a lot, and I can't wait to see the pictures that you post. Bye.